Hey, I'm here with Aubrey Graham, a.k.a. Drake. He's a star of Degrassi and an up-and-coming rap artist. How are you today? Good, man. How you doing? You underestimated greatly. Most number ones ever. How long did it really take me? Call me on my cell phone. And I'm focused on getting more. They too stuck on getting even. I'm ready for it. Uh, hi everyone. Cold hearts and heated floors, no parental guidance, I just see the voice. I hate a privileged rapper who don't even know what it take. I said, are y'all ready? Fuck a pigeonhole, I'm a night out, it's a different mode. Body on a bus down, a thotty with a bus down. Try me a hundred times. We can done, we can done, we can done. Man, it's crazy to think about that it's been well over a year since I last made my Rise of Drake video. And first off, I just want to thank all of you guys for watching that video, leaving a comment, sharing, liking it, all that good stuff. Because that's my most successful video on my channel. So again, thank you guys. And I figured, you know what? Drake has done a lot since then, and I've been getting comments about an updated video, so I said, why not? So boom, I last left off on when Donda and CLB came out. Imitation is a flattery, it's just annoying me. Great dad, now we don't have any certified lover boy. Which, looking back at it, was a fun time, man, because the competition was real. And I remember having this fake COB with like a Dropbox link, thinking all of it was legit, but only like two of those songs actually made the cut, but whatever. <laughs> but that was back in September of 2021. What has Drake done since? Well, Kanye and him ended up having a rare ass show in California called the Free Larry Hoover Benefit Concert, which I wish I would have attended looking back at it now. It's honestly one of the rarest, most legendary shows in hip hop when you think about it. And when they played forever, together? Nah, stop it fam, stop it. Thank you. I ended up going to Rolling Loud Cali though for that weekend and everyone at Rolling Loud was talking about that Larry Hoover show and saying, ooh, yo, who's gonna make that surprise appearance? Cause they were both in town still. People were like, I guarantee you Drake's coming out or I guarantee you Ye popping out. I was like, yo, but for who's set though? I could see Drizzy popping out for Future cause it just makes sense with their history and whatnot, but I wasn't sure where Ye would pop out at. Turns out Future brought out Kanye and the roof, there was no roof, but you know what I mean. Blue off, bruh. I was speechless, not gonna lie. It was my first time seeing Ye, so I couldn't believe it for real. But it is what it is. When Rolling Loud announced that they were going to Toronto for the first time, I was like, no Drake? You know what? This could be Future's time to bring him out, like a surprise guest. So you know what? I'ma cop a ticket. I'ma cop it. Did Drake come out? We gonna get into that though. In 2022 though, yeah, Drizzy went crazy arguably one of his most unique biggest and best years of his career he started off the year being featured on gunna's ds4 on a song called p power Show you a lick, now you working, my baby. You fuck on me and feel personal, baby. He ended up winning five awards at the 2022 Billboard Music Awards, including Top Artist, Top Male Artist, Top Rap Artist, Top Rap Male Artist, <laughs> mad specific, and Top Rap Album with Certified Loverboy. He then went on to be placed fourth on Forbes' highest paid rappers of the previous year, and then he announced a return to touring. Speaking of that, he was supposed to have a show in New York at the Apollo, but we'll talk about that too. In March, he ended up winning Hip Hop Artist of the Year at the 2022 iHeartRadio Music Awards. I also found this next stat to be pretty interesting, yet random as hell, and a bit unfair in my opinion. So there's an article that says, 
Drake and Taylor Swift each had more streams than every pre-1980 song combined last year. His music accumulated 7.91 billion streams, while songs pre-1980 had generated 6.32 billion. I mean, that is impressive, obviously, but isn't that like unfair? Because I mean, back then there was no streaming and it's been decades since those songs were in their relevancy. So I mean, yeah, whenever Drake drops, of course the numbers are going to go crazy because we're in the digital age. And I get it. A lot of those pre 80s songs are probably still being played today if they're classics, but still it's a new age and he's still releasing music. So I don't know. I just feel like that stat is just a bit unnecessary, but hey, it definitely makes Drake look good. He then went on to be featured twice on Future's album. I never liked you on the songs. I'm on one and wait for you. It's right here. Right knee, left hand, left knee. Supposed to be a dog, but you don't put me in a kennel. Which both hit the top 15 on Billboard. But Wait For You ended up going number one for a week, but still. That song actually became Drake's 10th number one song in his career, making him the 10th act to achieve 10 number ones. And out of nowhere, I'll never forget, I was actually on my way to a Pusha T concert of all things. Drake announced his next project, Honestly Nevermind, on Instagram. Fire album cover, by the way. He even put in the caption, seventh studio album. I was like, whoa, out at midnight? No way, bro. And a lot of people in the comments were like, oh yeah, this album about to be straight bangers. Like, yeah, this gonna be way better than CLB, bro. It better be on some aggressive shit. If you're reading this, it's too late shit. It better not be nothing soft, etc., etc." Well, we got something out of right field, bro. With a house party slash dance slash backyard barbecue music. I didn't really know what to think of it at first. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, man. This is so different and not what anyone was expecting. It ended up selling 204,000 copies in its first week, becoming Drake's 11th number one album and making him the fifth artist with over 10 number one albums. And I ain't gonna lie, I was talking a lot of shit when this first came out, bro, for like a month or two. Pusha T actually made a slight comment, like a little jab. At the show? At the show. Wow, what he said? Because he kept saying, it almost drives the fucking album of the year. And I don't care who drops, and the whole mm. crowd's like, oh. he's like, ain't nobody fucking with this album. I was like, that was clearly a subtle shot to Drake. But uh, yeah, when I first heard the first like three songs, I was like, <laughs> what is this, man? Like, but it's still not that good. Not realizing that all the barbecues and get-togethers that I was going to, this was being played. And it really was a great summer album. Like, it really was a vibe. While making this video, this shit is growing on me like crazy. Now I can totally understand why this album is liked. Songs like Fallin' Back, I, how do I feel? Sticky, you know how sticky it get? Texts Go Green, If I come around you, can I be myself? massive oh when you're ready we can put this behind us a keeper bro that ending part that shit puts me in a trance for real crazy vibes and of course jimmy cooks fuck a pigeonhole i'm a night out it's a different mode which i think a lot of people thought this whole album would sound like either way that shit slap in august of 2022 he would have a pretty legendary show a young money reunion show in toronto which i wish i could have attended for real Him and DJ Khaled ended up collabing for the song Staying Alive, which Khaled said in an interview, it was the hook of the century. The hook of the century. Thank you. The whole world's gonna sing it no matter what. You gotta love Khaled, bro. It's a pretty dope song, but it definitely didn't stick the way Khaled thought it would. In fact, that song actually marked the 30th Drake song to reach the top five on the charts, breaking a 55-year-old record for most songs to reach the top five on the charts previously held by big draco <laughs> now nah, i'm just playing the beatles interestingly enough though the song text go green tied the record which was held by kendrick in the same year with the song we cry together for the biggest single week drop in billboard hot 100 history 
falling from number 13 to number 94. In October of 2022, he would announce that he's going to be doing a rare ass show in New York at the Apollo Theater in Harlem. For those who don't know about that theater, well, it's one of New York's most famous venues. It's been around since the early 1900s. The capacity is only around 1500 and Drake has never performed there. So this is definitely a rare show, but it ended up getting delayed at first due to the unfortunate passing of that boy Takeoff. Bruh, I still can't believe he's gone, man. Rest in peace for real. But yeah, it ended up getting pushed back to December for two dates. But even that show didn't happen. But it's crazy because as I'm recording this video, Drake actually posted on his Instagram hours ago about this show this weekend, January 21st and the 22nd. It was super hard to even get tickets for this show. So yeah, it was like a sweepstakes or some shit with Sirius XM. I don't have tickets. I'm sure it's sold out. Probably won't be there, but man, I really wish I was going to that show, bro. Regardless though, let's go back to October 28th because this is the day that Drake and 21 Savage released their collaborative album, Her Loss. Scratch that. It actually released on November 4th because of Drake's longtime producer 40 had COVID. The album, in my opinion, is great. Drake carries hard on this tape to me because he does have a lot more vocals on this than 21 does. Don't get me wrong though. Whenever 21 does his thing, he does his thing. There's a lot of fire tracks on here, bruh. Circle Loco with the Daft Punk sample? Pfft, gas. I've been blowing through the money like a grown cheese. Back outside, boys, where Yachty's ad libs is fire. Cutting the trash and bed in the corner, bet I make shit glide. By the way, the cover art, not really a fan, bro. But yeah, there's a lot more tracks on here that stand. Beat it. Can you talk to the ops next for me? 21. That's huh? a dude? Yeah. Oh, hell no. Nah. <laughs> like a girl, bro. Oh, God, I did. You look like a girl. Oh, you talking about it. Look, look it's, it's a whole trend, bro. Like, they got mad people that, like. For me, the 21. Can you do something for me? Can you talk to the ops next? Start the V. Snakes in the grass, so they harder to see. Braid it up in my sweet so Hit them, then I get him. He's on. Fantano actually has some interesting words for it, though. <laughs> to the point where much of this album is actually tasteful entertaining, cool to listen to, and not nearly as corny as it could have been. Uh, spare those jabs at black women that just didn't really need to fucking happen. Speaking of words from Drizzy, his jabs at Megan the Stallion were interesting. So it didn't take long for Megan to get wind of this. I know I'm very popular, but y'all gotta stop attaching weak blank conspiracy theories in bars to my name. Stop using my shooting for clout. Since when the F is it cool to joke about women getting shot? Serena Williams, which was hella random. I just didn't really need to fucking happen. He came at Dram, Ice Spice. Yeah, Drake was out here on this tape. The album sold 404,000 copies first week. In fact, eight of the album's songs debuted in the top 10 of the Billboard Hot 100, extending Drake's record for most top 10 entries with 67, with a record 49 as a lead artist. He's also the only artist to log eight top 10s from an album twice he even posted this on his instagram bro showing all the songs from his album that made the top 10 except the number one track which he covered <laughs> bro i thought that shit was hilarious i just love the aggression of this whole project really it's one of his best projects in a while for sure another funny thing too is that drake and 21 both posed for a fake vogue magazine shoot which they used to promote their album and they were even sued by the publisher of vogue for like four million dollars or something like that and apparently he also came at XXX Tentacion. If you've seen my part one of Drake's documentary, you know I talk lengthy about that X and Drake beef and how there's a lot of controversy about X's passing and how a lot of people think Drake has something to do with it. Well, yeah, apparently he sent his shots to X again on the song On BS. Drake was taking shots at everybody on her loss, but everyone is still talking about this one. Maybe I should do a 20. Maybe I should break that 20. Break a 20, get two 10s. Add two fives, get another 10. And 10, 10, 10 in Roman numerals is XXX. And then he came with this next bar. If he held his tongue on that live, he'd be alive again, damn. So OV, everybody in OVO suck my dick. Besides party next door, I follow party next door. There's still a lot of conspiracy theories surrounding Drake and X. And feeding into it with another diss like this is a wild move. Yeah, I don't know, man. You be the judge when it comes to this whole X and Drake thing. Because another thing that took place was in December. Rap TV posted this on their Instagram. 
Instagram, saying that Drake was listed as a potential witness in X's murder trial. Yeah, I don't know, man. Shit's real sus if you ask me. At the 2022 People's Choice Awards, Drake was nominated for three awards, Male Artist of 2022, Song of 2022 for Wait For You with Future and Thames, and Collaboration Song of 2022 for Jimmy Cooks. And remember I told y'all about Rolling Loud Toronto though? Yeah, your boy went there solo in September. I was taking Ubers everywhere that first day, but I ended up figuring out the buses and the trains and whatnot. It was an interesting weekend for sure. But guess what fam, Drake never popped out. I was very disappointed bro. I still had a good time though. Wizkid and Ray Schremer? Bro, they were amazing. Future on the other hand, he was pretty forgettable, not gonna lie. Plus, everyone was expecting Drake to come out, but it's all good. I found it pretty funny too what Drake said in this little interview about hookah. Oh, what's the hookah flavor? It's it's Habibi's. First of all, this little pouting face that he be doing, <laughs> bro, that should be blowing my. Like, what are you doing? Look at him, fam. Why does he do it so often? Like, that shit is funny as hell. But continue on. Never smoke. By the way, I'd like to say that I'd like to say something. I feel like in the no live video with two chains, I was smoking hookah. I feel like I was responsible for the hookah boom. He did it again, bro. He did it again. In America, I just want to lay claim to that. I don't know if anyone wants to give me that credit, but it was way less shisha in the club and way less shisha spots in America before I smoked. So, that was in like 2014. Oh. I was on the hookah wave, the shisha wave way earlier. You know what's crazy though? The album of the year for me was Metro Boomin's Heroes and Villains project, right? And tell me how Drake was supposed to be on that hoe. Metro revealed in a recent interview that Drake was supposed to be on Trance, the song with Travis and Thug, but he said it was already after the song was done and locked in. Why did that version not make the album? Really, it was a song I had did with Travis and Thug originally. I was just in the studio with Drake one time because we were going to do some stuff on my album. And he just wanted to hear some songs from my album. Then he heard that one and really wanted to get on it. But like I was letting him know that he was really just done for real. And I was really just set on how it was. I was like, Brian, didn't try to sell you no dream. Like mm -hmm. it's really like just locked in. I'm locked in where it was. He had hit me and was just like, man, uh, let me see if it's just anything he could add to it. And he was like, if you don't like it, then whatever. So he did, he did some stuff, a couple parts was cool, but like, I just felt like, just even with like slime verse and traverse and the outro, it was just already like, it just really Sending wasn't no stuff. room. Yeah. It was right. just wasn't no room. It wasn't no personal, it just wasn't no room. It was just recently leaked and it's gas. I can't play the whole thing, of course, but damn Metro. We go so far back in time. We put on a feathers for this type of weather. She go to the club to bust up a door. Who cares if it wouldn't have fit or if it was too long of a song? Come on, man. You put Drizzy on your shit. Drake was recently featured on a song with Popcon. That shit is gas. We can done. We can done. We can done. But yeah, man, Drake said he's going on tour this year, so you already know. Them shit's about to be bread. But more than likely, I'm in there. It's gonna sell out everywhere, to be honest. But yeah, Drizzy Drake Rogers. He truly is the greatest artist of this generation, let alone of all time. The accolades speak for themselves, fam. Yeah, some people criticize him with the ghost writing, and some people just don't respect his shit. But you can't argue with the numbers. You can't argue with the impact he's had on the industry. Not only is Drake literally the highest certified digital singles artist ever in the United States, having moved 142 million units based on sales and on-demand streams, but he's always in everyone's top 10 Spotify wrapped or Apple Music replay even if they say they don't even listen to him like that like bro that's crazy him and bad bunny in 2022 were probably the most popular artists around bro if we really being honest that man has been making hits after hits since i was legit starting ninth grade back in 2008 <gasps> yeah Damn, I'm getting old, fam. <laughs> but for real, though, like, he's still out here. He could have stopped making music at least five years ago and still probably would have been considered the GOAT. So, yeah, I'm gonna give that man his flowers while he's here and just appreciate consistency and greatness. He's the certified lover boy. Honestly, never mind. It's her loss. Let me know in the comments, fam. What's your favorite Drake song, favorite project, your memories with Drake's music? Let me know all of that, and I'll check you guys in the next video. Peace. 901 Shelby Drive, look alive, look alive